Welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Mark Alexic. The football team went to Winston-Salem to take on the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, the defending ACC champions. First quarter, Wake already up by three. Josh Adams takes the handoff, and he is in for the touchdown. It's 10-0 Wake Forest. In the second quarter, Connor Barth puts home this 38-yard field goal, making the score 10-3. Now, on the ensuing kickoff, Kevin Marion takes it at the two. He's got blocks. He's got room, running room, that is, and he is gone. Nothing but green all the way to the end zone for a 98-yard interception return for a touchdown. Now, here in the fourth quarter, Carolina's fighting back. T.J. Yates looks right. He's got Bobby Rome for the 11-yard touchdown pass. And on UNC's next possession, Yates looks right, passes right, but it's picked off. Picked off by Aaron Curry. And Curry, again, seeing nothing but green, taking it all the way to the house for a 77-yard interception return for a touchdown. And Wake went on to win 37-10, making some Tar Heel players think it's time for a change. We're at the top of the hill waiting to get over, you know, we're just little thing, mental errors that, that keeps killing us and we just got to fix it. So Saturday's football game was uh, terrible if you're a Carolina fan, but of course there is always basketball. If you got a copy of Friday's USA Today, you see the man himself, Tyler Hansborough, sporting some serious guns, letting the world know that the coaches poll ranked Carolina number one for the preseason. Their first game is against Shaw this Saturday. The women's soccer team is getting things back on track after a shaky start to the season. Yael Averbutch knocked in a pair of goals for the 7th ranked North Carolina on thir Thursday to secure the win. It's the Heels' 7th win in a row and improves their ACC record to 8-1. and one. The Wolfpack would provide North Carolina some much needed warm-ups as they prepare to take on 3rd ranked Virginia. It was Aver Averbush's 4th game winning goal for the season. The men's soccer team took on the Clemson Tigers Sunday as the Heels tried to improve upon their 2-3 conference record. Michael Callahan on the move crosses it to Bill Dworsky and Dworsky gets the goal. Carolina's up 1-0. And less than a minute later, Clemson's Michael Buckles has a free kick and an easy goal. We're tied at 1. Speaking of easy shots, a Clemson foul gives Zach Lloyd a penalty kick, sending the goalie to the grass and the ball to the net for Carolina's second goal. Now in the second half, Callahan a free kick off the foot and off Dworsky's head in for the goal. Heels lead by two, but don't get too excited, Tar Heels. Here come the Tigers, clawing their way back into the game, and Carolina's Andre Sherrard gets called for the foul. This gives Buckles a penalty kick, and he lasers it in for the goal, but that's it for the Tigers. The Heels hold on for the Carolina victory, 3-2. to two. This one we had to grind out a little bit, you know, because uh, we, we just had a hard time finding our rhythm in this game, and... Uh, when you have those games and you do have them once in a while, you know, you still need to find ways to win. The field hockey team wrapped up an impressive season, regular season, with an 18-0 record. Sarah Moore gives us a look at what the team has gone through and what the, and what the heels still have ahead. Well, we're, we're delighted that we went undefeated in the regular season. And, of course, I told the girls, congratulations for that, and let's put that one to bed. The team might put that one to bed. But to everyone else, an undefeated regular season is still worth mentioning. The field hockey team made 83 goals during the season, while letting in only nine goals from opponents. In the beginning of the season, we let in a couple um, really weak goals against weaker teams, and then we got better and better. So I think it was important to get the shutouts because it showed our improvement. The Heels recorded 12 shutouts during the regular season. Coach Shelton says these shutouts came from more than just a great goalie. Got great uh, defenders, uh, and we, we defend actually collectively. So the forwards defend, and, and that's been a strength of ours. The midfielders defend, the backs defend, the goalie defends. So it, it's been a total team effort, and I'm proud of the group. In addition to a tough defense, the field hockey team depends on leadership from the seniors. You know, I have seven seniors, and, and it's very rare that uh, we have seven seniors, um, and especially seven outstanding seniors. I think just every day in practice, if I bring it and I play with intensity, it definitely rubs off on other players. So I feel like that's more of my role, being a, a leader by example. The field hockey team's success came right here during the regular season. Next, the team will venture to Boston for the ACC tournament. Uh, we just entered the second season, and everybody's 0-0. The Heels have a bye until the semifinals of the tournament. 
Carolina has already beaten all of the opponents they might face this weekend. In Chapel Hill, I'm Sarah Moore, Carolina Week Sports. Awesome. The volleyball team was in Atlanta over the weekend taking on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The Heels lost the match 3-2 in a close fifth game with a score of 17-15. Becca Brinkley led Carolina with a 69% hitting percentage. The Lady Heels will return to action on Tuesday when they host NC State. So kind of a mixed bag as far as wins losses for Carolina sports this weekend, but you know, we'll take what we can get for right now. Absolutely, and it's crunch time for a lot of these sports teams. Definitely uh, great to see them at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you, Mark. You know, maybe we should call this next story Bar Wars. Coming up, why people in Mexico care about the type of tequila you might be drinking. 